Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I think we have the potential to be a really good team. Now, I thought that coming into the season as well. And But there are some things that we have to do collectively and individually to get there. And, and uh, you know, actions are going to speak a lot louder than any words. So we'll see how this offseason goes. But, yes, I, I'm excited about the potential of our team. Um, but we've got we've got to do it. I mean, we've got to perform. It's so hard uh, to concentrate on what Mickey Loomis is saying when you're trying to make out what he's saying between smacks of gum. Now, I I saw somewhere on Twitter X that he had like a sore throat or something, and so that's why he was chewing the gum. Um. Okay. Maybe just some chloroseptic spray. Can you suck it up for five minutes? I mean, I did a week's worth of shows last week with no voice at all. Because I screamed like an idiot. Okay, it wasn't a full week. It was on Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday were pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, you had cough drops in the break, something. I mean... You make it work. We can do this. Anyway. Maybe it's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't mean to start this by talking about the man chewing gum. But I don't like when I can... It, again, this is a me thing. I don't like when I can hear people chewing their food. Like That's just a pet... Everyone has pet peeves, right? Everyone has pet peeves. Muse, what's one of your pet peeves? Uh, on that, on that uh, regard, slurping. I don't like slurping. Slurping. Yeah, I'm guilty. I do that. I've done it. Yeah. When I get to the bottom of an icy, I'm I'm getting all of it out of there. <sighs> that it. or like someone eating soup off a spoon. Yeah. Got, yeah. That's well, uh, that, that's part and parcel with yeah. hearing people. But like, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to hear you or people when they talk to me while they're eating their food. No, no, chew, swallow, then speak. Anyway, it, I get that's a me thing. It's just a pet peeve. Everyone's got pet peeves. Um, another pet peeve I have is my favorite football team sucking and missing the playoffs for three straight years. I don't like that very much. And in large part, it's because Mickey Loomis isn't very good at his job right now. I don't know if he ever was, quite honestly, considering a lot of the, the coaching and personnel decisions that he's made and his inability to explain them. Um, I'll, I'll get to uh, some of the Dennis Allen stuff because Loomis did talk about the decision to retain Dennis Allen. Let me get to some of this the sort of newsy stuff first. Of course, um, can you play number one? Here was uh, Mickey Loomis on the decision to part ways with P. Carmichael. DA and and uh, we just as an organization decided that we needed to change. And Pete's a fantastic coach. Uh, been with us for you know 17, 18 years. Done a lot of really, really good things. But just felt like we needed to change. Um, I can respect not going into greater detail, but saying we felt like we just felt like we needed a change isn't sufficient. Change for the sake of change rarely, if ever, is an acceptable outcome. You don't change something just to change it. You have to have a motive for changing and a reason for the direction that you're taking. If you tell me we're moving on from Pete Carmichael because our offenses have struggled the last two years and we feel like we were stuck in neutral and we needed some some innovation. Okay, change for the sake of change doesn't sound like you have a plan. And that's tough. Now, he wasn't going to give anything away with respect to the offensive coordinator. He said they're in the early stages, and when asked specifically about um, candidates on staff, he was asked specifically about John Gruden. He deflected those and says he, he wasn't going to talk about people that were up for the job. And I, I respect that. I understand. I mean, you, you do see teams put out your graphics and announcements when they interview candidates for the head coaching job or front office jobs. We saw that with Jeff Ireland today, who interviewed for the GM job with the Chargers. So I understand when you put those out, but I also understand 
to whatever degree you can keep things under your hat, you're going to do that. So I, I, I have no problem, actually, with him not discussing candidates right now. That's I, I can respect that there's a process that you follow. Um, there was also He was also asked about Ryan Ramchick, and I think this one is really significant because when you look at the roster itself, going into this offseason, look, you, you were 9-8, and eight, but you were 9-8 and eight against the worst schedule in the NFL. And as we've gone through, you, a lot of the starting quarterbacks you didn't have to face. You didn't face Kirk Cousins or Justin Fields or Daniel Jones or Anthony Richardson. I mean, you faced a lot of backup quarterbacks, and you still missed the playoffs again in the worst division in football. So you could say 9-8, and eight, and then a vacuum that sounds really good, but when you pull back and take the 10,000-foot view, you realize... It's, it's not good enough. Well, you have a lot of questions on your roster, and I think the biggest is offensive line because of Ramchick's uncertain future. Uh, Andrus Pete James Hurst are both li- likely not back next year. So you could, in theory, be replacing three of your five starters on the offensive line. But Loomis sounded optimistic about Ryan Ramchick. Look, anytime you have a good player who's going through uh, you know, a tough thing um, health-wise, you're always concerned, um, and yet, you know, I have a positive feeling about where where he's going to end up, and I think he does as well. That's really encouraging, because if if you are able to get Ramchick back, and I don't know that we're ever going to see Ryan Ramchick look and play like the player he did early in his career when he was the best right tackle in football when he was an All Pro. You know, he, he, Ryan Ramchick is currently under contract through 2026. Uh, so, and they've got, you know, one of those voidable years at the end in 2027 when he becomes an unrestricted free agent. But, you know, you've got him under contract for three more years, and Ramchick isn't an, an old player. You brought him in here in 2017. You know, he's, he's, at the same point in his career as, as Lattimore and as and as Alvin Kamara. But you sure would like for him to be in a spot where he's healthy, where you feel like he could play into his early mid thirties. And and that for a guy that that was a stalwart early in his career, that has certainly waned uh, for Ryan Ramchick here of late. But if you are able to get Ryan Ramchick back healthy and, and being a, a full time starter again, that's a major boost for this team because of not only the financial resources you have invested in him, but you don't really have another great option right now at right tackle. You seem to have missed on Trevor Penning, obviously, but you know Ramchick, after only missing one game through the first four years of his career, played in just 10 games in 2021. He missed a game in 2022, and then he missed five games this year. So you know, it's he hasn't played a full season since the COVID year. Um and that would be massive if you could get him back healthy. Now, uh, the other real big question about this roster is the age of the roster. The Saints, as we all know, are the oldest roster in the NFL, and and it's showing. And Loomis was asked about the, the age of the roster and, and how he feels about it. Tamario Davis was all pro. He's 35 years old, 34 years old. You know, uh, Cam Jordan basically played on one leg for more than half the season and was productive. And, you know, age is a number... It's more about the performance. And so, and I like some of these young guys that have come along, you know, Alante Taylor and Paulson Adebo and, and uh, Carl Granderson. I, mean, we, we, I can name a lot of players, Eric McCoy, the receivers that we have. There's a lot of really good things. And I mean, I don't feel like we've got a particularly old team. And usually, I don't know what, I didn't see the one you're looking at, but usually the spread between the oldest and the, and the youngest is like 12 months. 13 months. So it's not like it's, you know, we got a team that's got a bunch of uh, 35-year-olds and another one that's got a bunch of 23-year-olds. That's just so naive. It's so naive because you have to look at, at who your starting players are. And the first words out of his mouth were about Demario Davis and Cam Jordan, both guys in their middle 30s. And we just talked about Ryan Ramchick, who of course isn't an old man, but in football terms, especially when you've got bad knees, you are getting old. And your quarterback is in his 30s. And Alvin Kamara has had injury problems now. So you are. I mean, it's an undeniable reality when you have the oldest roster in the NFL. 
He keeps deflecting. That's that's probably the most challenging part of this is li- listening to Mickey Loomis deflect these very obvious issues and shortcomings that this team and this organization have. And maybe none bigger than Dennis Allen, who they're going to ride with. And Mickey Loomis explained his decision to stick with Dennis Allen. You know, the easy thing to do, the lazy thing to do is look at the results of a season and say, ah, it's a coach's fault or it's a quarterback's fault. I think oftentimes you have to look beyond that. Look, I was prepared for this question, right? Chuck Knoll, his first three years, Hall of Fame coach, he was 1-13, and 5-9, and 6-8. and eight. But they recognize that this guy's a good football coach, right? Bill Belichick, 6-10, and 7-9, 7-9. And and Tom Landry, 0-11, 4-9, 5-8, 4-10, 5-8. Four and Hall of Fame coaches, all of them. You got to look beyond that. You know, what are the reasons why we were 9-8 and eight instead of, you know, 13-4? and four? Look, it's, it's collective. It's the players. It's the coaches. It's me. It's our personnel staff, our roster. It's variables sometimes that we don't have any control of. My assessment is Dennis Allen is a good coach. With Sean Payton, we went 10-6 and six the first year, but then we were 7-9, and 8-8, eight and, eight, and I heard some of the same noise. But at the time, I knew we had a good football coach. And so I think sometimes the hard thing to do is to be patient and recognize your other shortcomings and get those fixed, and that's what we're doing. Oh, man. He brought up Chuck Knoll. Chuck Knoll was 1-13 in the first year in Pittsburgh. You know what he inherited? He inherited a team that in the previous five seasons went 5-9, and 2-12, and 5-8-1, 4-9-1, and 2-11-1. The year before Chuck Knoll got the job, the Steelers were 2-11-1. So yeah, the first year he got the job, they were 1-13. And, and then 5-9 and nine and 6-8 and, and then boom. 11-3, and 10-4, and 10-3, and 10-3-1. And won the Super Bowl. 12-2, and two, won the Super Bowl. He inherited a terrible situation. Tom Landry inherited an awful franchise. Dennis Allen didn't inherit an awful franchise. He inherited a team that had missed the playoffs for a year, but prior to that had won four straight division titles. How in the world could you possibly draw that comparison and believe it? We have a large enough sample size of Dennis Allen. He's not a first-time head coach. That's the biggest difference. You have a large enough sample size to know what this man is. That's the hardest thing, man, when you're talking about Chuck Knoll or Tom Landry. I mean, Jesus, listen to what what Mickey Loomis is saying. He's comparing Dennis Allen to literally the, the greatest head coaches ever, Bill Belichick. Are you high? Do you actually believe the bull ish you're spilling? I've used the Zach Taylor instance over and over. Yeah, man, it's lazy just to look at Zach Taylor's record and say, man, he's not a good coach. Because context matters. He inherited an awful Cincinnati Bengals team. And in year one, they went 2-14. and And then they drafted Joe Burrow, and in the COVID year, they doubled their win total, went 4-11-1. The next year, they were in the Super Bowl. They went 10 and 7, 12 and 4. This year they were 9 and out, 9 and 8 and did it playing half the season without Joe Burrow. Zach Taylor's career win-loss record is 37, 44 and 1. In a vacuum, you look at that and you go, that guy can't coach. But then you look at the situation and what he inherited and you go, oh, that's really impressive. So yeah, it is lazy just to look at a win-loss record. But damn it, Mickey Loomis. It's also naive and negligent if you keep ignoring the full body of work around Dennis Allen. This is the first time in his career he's had a winning record. The first time in his career he's had a winning season as a head coach. And he did it against the easiest schedule in the NFL, in the worst division in the NFL, and playing a handful of backup quarterbacks. How can you possibly, with a straight face smacking on your gum, sit here and try to convince me that that that's legitimate? What the hell kind of argument is that? 4-12, 4-12, 0-4, fired. The Saints hire him, 7-10, then 9-8 this year. Mm. 
Like the the more I hear Mickey Loomis speak, seriously, and it pains me, man. The more I hear Mickey Loomis speak, the more it calls into question what his actual role was in building the run that the Saints went on. How much of it really was just Sean Payton and Drew Brees, the one of the greatest offensive minds and one of the greatest quarterbacks the league has ever seen. And then, honestly, the Saints didn't start drafting well again until they brought in Jeff Ireland, right? I mean, that was a gigantic blemish on this on this franchise, was how poorly they drafted. Stephon Anthony and Haoli Kikaha, Stanley Jean Baptiste. And that you brought in Jeff Ireland, and boom, the 2017 draft came, and that set you on your trajectory again for the next four or five years. I'm not optimistic, man. Glad Mickey is. They got a lot of people that they're going to prove wrong if they're going to get this thing going in the right direction again. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.